Welcome to Retro Crisis. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can install RetroArch on your Android device. And by the end of this video, we will have a PSP game up and running and ready to play. So here is my Android phone. And the first thing you want to do is get yourself to the Google Play Store. Once you get to the Google Play Store, simply click on search and type in Retro Arch and then press search. Now you'll notice there's two versions of RetroArch that pop up. There's RetroArch Plus and RetroArch. So from my understanding, uh, RetroArch Plus comes with 120 cores pre-installed and works well on 64-bit Android devices, whereas the regular RetroArch comes pre-bundled with 50 cores and is suitable for older Android devices which support 32-bit system architectures. So if you have a fairly new phone, like a modern Pixel phone or a modern Samsung Galaxy, RetroArch Plus is probably your best bet. However, if you're rocking an older Android device and you're uncertain whether it's 64-bit or 32-bit, just click the regular RetroArch. For this video, I'm going to be installing the regular RetroArch. So once you click it, simply hit the install button and then sit back and wait. Great, so once it's installed, just hit the play button. So a message has just popped up which says, you need to grant access to read external storage, write external storage. So to this, I'm just gonna press okay. And then it says, allow RetroArch to access photos, media, and files on your device. And yes, we're gonna to have to click yes to that. So now we've got RetroArch installed, we need to download an emulator in order for us to play our PSP game. Now within RetroArch, the terminology is slightly different. So instead of calling it an emulator, we refer to it as a core. So RetroArch can have many cores, so maybe one core to play PSP games, one core to play Sega Mega Drive games, and so forth. So where we wanna go first is to online updater, and then we want to go to Core Downloader. So once you get to this screen, we want to scroll down until we get to Sony PSP. So there we go, Sony PlayStation Port. So it actually says Sony PlayStation Portable, but it's cut off from the edge of the screen. So I'm just going to click that, and it's going to begin downloading the Core. So the Sony PSP Core that we're downloading is known as PPSSPP. And then once that's completed downloaded, you'll see a little hash sign next to it. Now we can simply press back. And now what we need to do is get our PSP ROM file onto our phone. So what I'm going to do first is create a folder on my Android device where I will store all of my ROM files, just so they're all in one central location. So what you'll need to do is go to the app on your phone, which allows you to browse all of the internal storage on your device. So once you're in the root of your device's storage, you'll see a folder structure that looks roughly like this. It says alarms, Android, audiobooks, DSIM, and so forth. So what I need to do is create a new folder in this area, and I'm going to call it ROMs. So I'm going to click three little dots in the top corner and go to add new folder. And then I'm just going to call this ROMs. And then I'm going to create folder. And if I scroll down, you'll see ROMs. So I'm just gonna go into ROMs and I'm going to create a new folder. Go to add new folder and I'm going to type in PSP and create folder. Now, if I click on the PSP folder, you'll see it's empty. Now, what you need to do is get your PSP ROM file into this folder. So whether you download the file directly through your phone or if you connect your phone to your laptop or computer using USB. It's up to you how you do it. Whatever you do, it needs to get into this folder. Now, before we continue, I just wanna make clear, I can't tell you where to get ROM files from. So ROM files being the actual game files themselves, you'll have to source those yourself. So what I'll be doing is connecting a USB cable to my phone and using it as an external storage device on my computer. So if I navigate to this PC, and I'll see my Pixel 4 XL appear on the This PC menu. If I double click it, you'll gain access to the internal shared storage of the device. So I'll double click that, 
And then what I want to do is navigate to the folder I created earlier, which was called ROMs. So here it is, ROMs. Double click that, and I've got my PSP folder. Let's open that up. And then this is where I want to copy the PSP game file. So if I go to right click and paste, And then once that's done, I should be able to safely eject my phone from the computer and then disconnect the USB cable. And then returning to my phone, you can see that the game file has been successfully copied. So now I've returned back to RetroArch, I need to point RetroArch to that folder where the game files are kept. So I wanna to go to load content and I wanna to go to storage, emulated, zero. If I scroll right to the bottom, you'll see the ROMs folder that I made. So if I go here, and I go to PSP, and then I can click the game file. And there we have it. The game file has loaded successfully. Now, as you can see, here's the screen for the game, and here are the touchscreen controls. So if I take the phone and then just rotate it sideways, you'll see that it'll auto rotate and you'll get a much bigger view of the screen. And the touchscreen controls should work immediately so it's English. And there we have it. The game has loaded successfully and is running. Now, if you want to access any of the options of the game, you simply press this little alien icon in the bottom corner. And this will pull up the options sub menu. And you're able to go down, go to options, and then tweak any of the settings. One thing you might want to consider doing is upgrading the resolution so your game looks a bit sharper, but I'll let you experiment with that. There's a good chance you may or may not want to use the touchscreen buttons. What you're able to do is connect, say, like an Xbox controller via Bluetooth to your phone, and you should be able to control the game using the Xbox controller. And if you want to get rid of these buttons uh, whilst you're playing with a, uh, like a Bluetooth controller, you can simply go to this little button in the bottom corner that's got like a downwards pointing arrow and just press that and it'll get rid of all of the uh, touchscreen controls. And there we have it. In this video, you've learned how to install RetroArch, how to download a core, how to create a folder for your ROM files, how to copy your ROM files to your Android device, and how to use the touchscreen controls and how to get rid of those touchscreen controls just in case you decide to use a Bluetooth Xbox controller. I hope this video was useful, uh, if it was, please do consider subscribing to the channel, and if you know of any uh, better ways of doing anything you've seen in this video, please do drop it in the comments. This has been Retro Crisis, thank you for watching.